lot of countries, well, a lot of places, like governmental bodies, whether it be like country level or like city level, county level, have been making bids to attract these digital nomad, like remote worker mm-hmm. folk, especially places that are not necessarily like the hottest destination for like longer term folks. They realize like, hey, if we can like incentivize people to move here at least for a year up to like multiple years, they'll spend money in our economy and like help bolster that. So uh, there have been so many countries that have been like coming out with quote unquote digital nomad visas. And what I find interesting is that most of these, because we both looked this up ahead of time, there's like a pretty long list of countries that are offering these kinds of things. But most of them are like minimum one year visas, which is like Mm. really generous for like very minimal requirements for a lot of these places. I even saw domestically, there were like a lot of cities and counties that were doing promotions about like, you know, move here and like, we'll pay for your relocation costs. And there's like this program for people who move here using this program where like we take you on trips and like see the best of the local sites. So yeah, I feel like a lot of not even internationally, but even just locally, a lot of different places try to like grab onto that and like grab hold of that because they already saw so many people were like moving out and were open to moving out to like what we would previously call podunk places they're like oh yeah people want to want to come here all right cool like we'll give you a little bit of incentive so that you'll pick our podunk place versus like wherever podunk place you were gonna go to begin with which i think is like a really interesting form of like drawing people to work there that hasn't existed domestically before i feel like internationally maybe like something like that has existed in some form for some of those countries already on the list, like drawing workers out there. But yeah, domestically, I don't think I've ever seen that before. I definitely saw at least two or three different domestic campaigns for like rando cities I would have never considered. West Virginia. I got one for West Virginia. I was like, I'm not moving there. I think I also got one for like Kansas or like Kentucky or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, interesting. Mm -hmm. And we like vaguely considered it for a little bit because we're like, I mean, when we were domestic digital nomads for a while, I was like, if they're going to pay us and we don't need to be anywhere, we just... It didn't end up happening. But yeah, it is cool. I think there are like slightly different reasons why um, domestic versus international are offering the incentives though, or mm. what is interesting for the remote workers for yeah, either absolutely. of those cases. Because domestically, like they're hoping you like live there, essentially like move out of these like very dense few cities that most of us live in and spread out and help again, like jolt the economy. So then like housing prices go up, everything becomes better blah 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 but the international ones i saw there's kind of like two different waves of like programs that they're running so the country level i think it's largely take advantage of our like lower cost of living compared to Mm. wherever you are from and spend your money here at least for a year that's kind of like most of the country level stuff but then i did see similar things for like rural cities within european countries and it's places where their like fertility rates are so low that it's like you have to move here for 10 plus years and we'll pay you per family or per person per and we'll pay you more money per baby oh my God. yeah it's like literally like we have a hundred people in our town we need you to like repopulate our, our town so it's it's kind of interesting to see like all these different like I said, like governmental bodies, right? Because it's like from country level down to like city yeah. level, all trying to like vibe for this group of new like potential people that they can draw in. But let's name drop a few countries in case people are interested. Let's look at the list, baby. Yeah, there's a whole, there's honestly a so many lot lists. of countries. Yeah. The first one that like stuck out to me because it was actually one that we considered when we were still kind of like plotting out where we might go is Portugal because mm-hmm. they mm-hmm. made a pretty big splash during like like the initial digital nomad phase because they announced that you could not only get the one year digital nomad visa like very easily but then if you wanted to stay longer it could very easily transition into a permanent residency mm-hmm. visa and then eventually like legitimate 
permanent residency. So I originally thought about it because I was like, that might even be easier for me to become like an EU citizen eventually yeah. than through marriage be- just because of all the like red tape around like getting citizenship. So yeah, Portugal definitely is like very high up there for like f- super remote worker friendly and like pretty relatively easy um, steps. That's what my friend did. Uh, she and her husband moved to Portugal at the time with their newborn and i think they have another baby now so and that baby was i believe born there yeah so so yeah i think they're staying for the long haul kind of like that's pretty dope yeah it is pretty dope there were a few that stood out to me because i didn't know that they had these kinds of visas so like technically spain has one of these which i was like oh okay and taiwan has one you can stay for up to like three three to five years something like that but it's mostly for richer folks it's like an investor type oh i see investor entrepreneur type one some of these programs i've probably been around for a while and like they probably like most people don't even know that they exist i remember at the last company i worked at when I onboarded, there was a Canadian guy that was joining at the same time, but he was going to be working in the Polish office. I worked at a Polish company previously, and I was like, how are you working here? Like, I don't didn't think it was that easy to just be able to, like, land in Poland and work. And he was like, oh, yeah, like, the Canadian government and, like, Polish government have this, like exchange work visa program that's like very very hidden he was like i found it but it took me a while to apply because no one actually knew what the program was (laughs) it's like probably something that people don't use very frequently and probably wasn't super popular until people were like oh fuck i don't want to be like stuck here in my country when things are nicer in this country and it's cheaper and you have the same quality of living la 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 